Now for today's war crime of the day. This new award is reserved exclusively for the diabolical, like Katsan84. This poor Hinox went for a little nap, and he's about to wake up to a bit of a shock. Hi, my name is Dom and welcome back to Top Gaming Plays. Don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed today's video and submit your clips using the link in the description. But let's get into it. LPK found an interesting use for Sidon's power, hunting Moldugo. Passerine Bai hit this Lizzle Foss so hard, it became two Lizzle Foss. Introducing Wing Ball. For the price of just 18 wings, you too can create this low speed, slow falling, useless vehicle. Warning, it does not float. It's 2023 and you're still using a steering stick to control your vehicles? Okasun has a new technique, although I will admit, it's a little bit more fiddly. Not a single word was spoken in this clip, yet I can clearly hear a nope coming from OP. We've seen our fair share of Guardian Stalker builds on the channel, but Axel would like to throw his hat into the ring. He was kind enough to supply a parts list, which I'll put on screen now, as well as footage of the auto build. What I like about this build is how it genuinely walks like a stalker. It just needs a construct head and some beam emitters. The effect is achieved by large wheels that turn a small wagon wheel that has a stabilizer attached. Who needs sand seals? <laughs> From now on, this is exclusively how I ride around the desert. Time for the prestigious Build of the Day Award. If you've seen Will Smith's greatest ever film, Wild Wild West, you will probably remember the 80-foot tarantula. While it might not be 80 feet tall in game, Jahan Parks has recreated the monster in TOTK. The way it moves is honestly terrifying. The Colgera jaws give off a really sinister vibe. It's hard to see from the driving position, but there's two jaws curved inwards at the back that have wheels attached. These add extra momentum and keep the vehicle stable on the ground. One of the questions I predict we'll see in the comments is how did he get so many Colgera jaws? Well, the answer is usually by duping fused weapons and dismantling in Tarrytown, or the hardcore method is abusing blood moons.
We are now in the age of hyper-efficient vehicles, and that means new problems. Most Sonai parts seem to have a 30-minute duration limit that counts down as they're receiving power. Gliocks are one of the most feared creatures roaming Hyrule, but what if you could have one fighting by your side? It might not be as terrifying as the real deal, but Rhombus Void has created his version of a Gliok. So I've been covering a bunch of builds using the Project Orion method of propulsion, which in short, is using explosions for thrust. We know from Seiwin's build a few episodes back that the minecarts are capable of achieving this result. Sir Dave has submitted a new concept that uses balloons as a way to capture the explosions and convert them into thrust. Unlike minecarts, that means you can create multiple sources of thrust on one machine. If you want to torture a Korok on the hour, every hour, but need a way to keep track of time, Telgen has a proof of concept for a working clock in TOTK. If you booted up the game for the first time and went through the opening cinematic thinking this would be way funnier if Link had a comically large volume of meat attached to his character model, not only would you be right, but you're going to love this clip by Global Trance on YouTube. It's a little longer than the other clips in today's episode, but I giggled so much it was too good not to share. Thanks so much for watching guys, don't forget to hit subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you tomorrow for another video.